Welcome parents, athletes, coaches. I am here with Dr. Jason Smith, physiatrist here at Atlantic Health, home of Atlantic Sports Health. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, disc bulge and such a common injury that not only athletes have, but the everyday layman uh, it occurs to, to poor posture. But, but Dr. Smith, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got here at Atlantic Health, and, and I'm sure you see a lot of patients with this issue. Sure. So um, myself, I did my training in New Jersey Medical School in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, from there, I went on to do a specialty training in physical medicine and rehabilitation at uh, JFK Johnson Rehab Institute in Edison, New Jersey. Went on to therefore subspecialize in interventional spine and sports uh, in coordinated health in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, and uh, was out there for about three to four years. Um, and once there, an opportunity uh, arose for me to join the Atlantic Medical System uh, family, and it was a wonderful opportunity. Myself and my wife were both from New Jersey, uh, so it was a nice chance to come back home. Um, and so, you know, here I am. That's great. That's great. Well, welcome. And and I know we have our great model. Talk to us about the the disc bulge. You sure. know, why does it occur, and and what's happening, and and how do we prevent it? Okay. Sure. So the disc bulge is probably the most common. Uh, pathology that you're going to have in the, in the back, particularly in the lower back, the lumbar spine, um, as we like to call that area. Um, what causes it? There's a wide variety of causes for it. Uh, the most common is, is life, yeah. just living. As long as you keep aging, you're going to eventually get a form of a disc bulge. Now, that doesn't always mean that you have to have pain from it, but it will come. Um, but, however, there are certain scenarios that can increase your probability of getting one or even increase the frequency of, of you having discomfort from having a disc bulge and even increasing that bulge to eventually a herniation and possibly even what we call an extrusion or fragment. Mm -hmm. um, so that usually comes from when we put a lot of pressure on our lower back. Okay? Uh, as we know, unless you're laying flat down on your back, your lumbar spine or your lower back will always have some form of pressure mm -hmm. on it. Um, <clears throat> and the two lowest levels are really the two areas that tend to get beat up. Yep. So, you know, especially for our athletes when they do a lot of uh, heavy repetitive motions, whether yep. it's been the, the, the training room or in their sport of choice, um, they, they consistently put a very high velocity and high traction on their lower back, um, and they do it over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And while they are physically fit, you know, in, in great condition, it's still going to continue, continuously wear down yeah. um, on that area and, and put them at high risk for that. Yeah. So. What's interesting, I think, you know, we have a little model here, our trusty model, and to give people an understanding, I mean, when you look at the, the, the discs themselves, right? I mean, it consists of the, the annulus fibrosis, which is the collagen Correct. tissue um, that separates the two vertebrae, right? So the vertebrae are more like um, bricks, I like to kind of Correct. describe them as, yeah. and then this this collagen tissue holds in this this material, the nucleus propulsus. Right. I think I got that right, yeah, right? You got it right. And and you know the important thing is when we have bad posture. It seems like this slowly delaminates. You are correct. And and it, there's a challenge, and with bad posture or improper lifting technique, uh, a lot of times athletes will will promote this injury when they're doing the wrong things. And Correct. what would you say to parents out there? What would you say to people out there about good spine hygiene and, and the importance of keeping this healthy? Because that's really the bottom line. You said, you know, aging is, is we can't fight that, right? Correct. We're all gonna age, but we can slow it down. Correct. So what would be some recommendations? Stretching is vital. Stretching is vital. Um, I like to also sometimes talk to my patients about inversion table therapy mm -hmm. or a teeter-totter therapy yeah. um, to sometimes give a little bit of traction to that back to really kind of help stretch it out. Mm -hmm. um, I am very big on yoga and Pilates mm -hmm. okay, for working the core. It's a very uh, low impact um, exercise that can really help stretch the spine, really keep a, a nice amount of moisture within those discs. You know, when patients get imaging and they, they have that, that very common term, degenerative disc disease. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's my job to educate the patients, and I, and I let them know like this is something that everybody will get. Mm -hmm. Okay, and basically what it utilizes is that as we age, as we put our back through repetitive trauma, uh, we start to lose a little bit of water yeah. you know, out of that yeah. disc, and that's that's really how you start to kind of get that out pocketing a little bit. Yeah, you know, get that disc bulge. So you know, really trying to 
pull it apart a little bit really yeah. helps to kind of keep it going. Um, even doing exercises in the pool, right? You know, are, is really beneficial. Just the buoyancy of water giving your body a little bit of weightlessness. Sure. You know, really helps sure. as far as as far as going forward with that. So. I think that's an interesting point. Uh, you talked about yoga, and and from the research I've done, obviously there's some benefit to yoga, but also I think what's important to understand. Uh, depending on the type of athlete you are, right? right? I mean, so I think core stiffening and stabilization, creating those guy wires, Correct. right, around the core and, and creating a stable core to hold that posture together and, and keep that spine healthy because yoga in some ways will be good for some individuals, but Correct. also in some other, other individuals that need to be explosive Correct. might be a detriment, Correct. you know? And so, I'm sorry. sorry, go ahead. And so that's why, you know, piggybacking off with you, what you just said, um, and I appreciate you saying that. I like to always have my therapist involved as well because yeah. you're correct. Sometimes what will work for one person may not be a benefit to another. Right. You know, I always approach a patient with nobody's a cookie cutter. Right. Okay. So it's, you know, each each set of rehabilitation needs to be individualized for the patient. Yeah. You know, to see what they can use and utilize, yeah. you know, for them. So you're correct. Well, I think it's so important. And I think the takeaway here with, with Dr. Smith is that individualization is so critical. That's why it's important to get expert advice from someone like Dr. Smith here at Atlantic Health and, and understand where you need help. I mean, is yoga the right solution? Um, I, and I think for many adults, it very well could be. Uh, okay. And yeah. for some athletes, based on their spine type, because we know different athletes or different people have different types of spines, right? Yes. Some people have more of a log of a, of a spine. Some people have more of a wire, Correct. right? And, and as an athlete, say a golfer, you want to be more of a wire. And if you train to be like a log, well, guess what? Your golf game is going to get challenged yes. um, if you train too, too much with weights and whatnot. But in any event, really important information. This has been great. Hopefully, um, for all the viewers, you kind of get a sense that it's important to understand spine health, hygiene, spine health. We understand it's important to stay healthy and take advantage of, of flexibility exercises at the same time, building stability. Thanks so much for, for being Thank on you. today, Dr. Smith. Thank you.